morning, and thank you very much for joining us on this special edition of This Morning. I am Yori Folani. Special because, um, as you know, our program is usually an hour, but it will last 90 minutes today. It will be going all the way up to 12 noon, and um, that's primarily because we have uh, a very important person. In, the, in fact, we have three very important people in the studio. Uh, but as in terms of the man of the moment, the man all eyes are focused on, uh, Mr. Babajide Olushola Sanwolu, B-O-S, you know, is the APC candidate in the upcoming governorship election on March 9. And um, Mr. Um, and Mr. Sanwolu is here with his um, running mate, Dr. Kadri Obafemi Hamzat. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for coming. Thank you very much, Yuri, for having us. Indeed. And we also have a special guest in the studio because I'm talking here about um, Mr. Babatunde Raji Fashola, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. Uh, Mr. Fashola is the 14th Governor. Uh, 13th. 13th, I beg your pardon. 13th. 13th Governor of Lagos State. I've got to get my numbers straight. The 13th Governor of Lagos State. The incumbent is the 14th Governor. And um, this, and um, Lagos will be deciding on Saturday who indeed will be the 15th governor of Lagos State. Um, you're very welcome, gentlemen, to the studio. And uh, Clearly, Mr. Fashola is not on the ticket here, <laughs> but he's here to endorse. Um, and I guess uh, <coughs> any way you look at it, he knows one or two things about Lagos, as do the gentlemen here. Because let me start, Mr. Sawulu, with you. You are no stranger to governance in Lagos State, and for that matter, neither is Dr. Uh, Dr. Hamzat. Both of you have actually served, uh, interestingly enough, in the cabinet of Mr. Fashola here uh, at the time. So um, you, you know all about. Tell me your experience on the campaign trail. Well, I mean, thank so you. Far. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Folari, and uh, Yori, I think please. it's Yori. Okay. Uncle Yori. <laughs> 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 Not you too, Governor. <laughs> Former Governor. Well, I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a great honor to all to be on your program again. You know, when we started this whole journey about five months ago, we had the opportunity of coming over, right? And we did assure you that um, we'll come back, not because of you alone, but because of the teeming population, Lagosians, that are watching you and we want to sort of like, no, how has it been? Mm. What has been the journey like, right? And like you rightly observed, um, we're privileged. I personally had served three governors, you know. That's right. Ashiwaju, um, Mr. Fashola, who was my governor for, for eight years, and of course, the, the incumbent governor as well. Same with Dr. Amzat, you know. So between the two of us, we believe we've done close to 20, 25 years, you, you know, in public sector, right? And same number of years also in the private sector. Right, so what has been our experience on, on the campaign trail the last five, six months now? We've told right around the whole of Lagos, everywhere that needs to, to be touched. We've listened to people. We've, we've heard what are their concerns. What are the things they want Lagos, they want us to be doing differently? It's interesting you say that because I'm reading up, uh, studying for this, uh, this particular interview. I saw something where you wrote that you are going to concern yourself, your administration, with um, uh, loving the people of Lagos the way they want to be loved as opposed to um, loving them and doing the needful for them according to your dictates exclusively. No, it's, it certainly cannot be about you. And that's what service is. It's about them. It's about people. Right? That's also what leadership is, is to serve. Right? So if, if you th take a space in your own room and you believe you know it all, that's the beginning of failure for you. So it's only when you go out there, it's only when you engage people, it's only when you listen to people more that you can take all of the issues, all of the complaints, all of the observations, all of the suggestions that they have for you. And critically so, all of the things they want you to do for them at this point in time. You know, so, so on the trail, Femi and I had had that unique opportunity. Also knowing Lagos very well, but we didn't take them for granted. We still make sure that all stakeholders, you know, in, in, in whatever breed or creed or ethnicity you are from, we reached out to you. In whatever local government you are, in whatever prof prof profession you find yourself, to just pick up all of the issues, all of the concerns, you know, and we nicely, you know, put everything up, you know, in a policy document which we had called uh, project team, mm -hmm. you know, and we okay, said we're, that we're going to come to that. Absolutely, thing, you know, so I think those are some of the things we, we picked up on the way to say this is what Lagosians want us to be doing for us to take Lagos 
their Lagos to a greater height. And um, uh, Dr. Hamzat, um, actually, um, if anybody else made the mistake that I made, you're not a medical doctor. Uh, you actually are an engineer, and um, you took your doctorate in engineering back in 92. Did I get that right? There you yes. go. So you're a scientist, and um, as you've established, you've been in the system in Lagos in governance. Um, as you went around the <coughs> campaign trail, um, first of all, did you see evidence of maybe the results of your stewardship all that time, talking about computerizing Lagos, as it were, getting rid of ghost workers and that kind of a thing? Do you, d does that resonate? Well, I think if you, we all now say that Lagos is the fifth largest economy in Africa, but we didn't start like that in '99. We did thorough comp computerization of our processes. So we made ourselves better. We automated the processes, land administration, our finances. We created Oracle Enterprise that allows us to... You oversaw that? You know? we, yes. Mm. We were able to... Well, not me. Our mm. team. We're a team. Yeah, our okay. team, you know. We had a fantastic team. And we have captains like Ashuraju BRF. And it's a team. We bring everything to our ESCO. We have diverse opinions coming. So everybody has different experiences. So it allows us as a team to know everything in all the areas. Because we, the, the governors we have, they are fantastic. They allow everybody to come in and have a discussion. So it's not just because you, are, you know this area, bring it to the table, and we all put in. And we, we, we all go behind each other, and they give us the tools, and we're able to implement. And we can see that across the state. Is it on roads, drainages, everywhere? Uh, education, mm -hmm. automation of mm -hmm. all. So it, it's, it, it, it was nice, but again, like everything else in life, you have to again recalibrate and then move on because, you know, life is dynamic and as such things we change. But we, we, like you said, we have the experience. We understand Lagos. And, you know, in life, what you cannot measure, you cannot manage it. Our party is the only party that understands the measurement of Lagos. So it's only us that can manage it. Um, Minister Fashola, endorsing, you know, and I, I specifically chose that title, mm -hmm. um, Minister Fashola, um, you endorsing this team and um, people who know you, you know, you, they, they have the impression that you keyed in very, very well to the theme of Center for Excellence in Lagos. Um, endorsing this team, ordinarily I'd say, why are you endorsing this team? But it would be a superfluous question. First of all, they are of your party. But then it seems to me that even beyond that, uh, is there something that you see in this team? Thank you, Yuri. Um, I don't think it would be superfluous. First of all, I'm going to address them the way I, we've addressed yes, yes, each yes, other, so Femi and uh, Gide. And um, just listening now just brought back many memories of the kind of very uh, rigorous and intense debates we, we, That's the style we, of we, we had uh, then. Uh, and almost like the debates that the ladies were having this morning about the wig and the, and the hair. <laughs> so, but, but seriously, um, I, I, I feel privileged to be here as a citizen and to say that the choice we have to make on Saturday will be a choice that is not so much about APC or any other party. It will be a choice about ourselves. Who should we entrust our lives to? Because that is what really it's all about, about the 21 plus million of us here. Who will better manage our affairs? And without a doubt in my mind, it is this team. Only you would say that, the, they being of your party. They, they, beyond being of my party, you see, we are at a point in our development where we cannot experiment. Yeah. And it is important to emphasize that, that we, and I've always said, APC or me or GD or anybody are not necessarily the most brilliant people, right? But we are better than what is on the other side. In terms of experience, we're a lot better. We know the state. We've governed it. We've built most of its processes. And their successes have been validated nationwide, on the continent, and beyond. And so this, this is not uh, a state to experiment with. And when you look at the choice that lies before 
us, Lagosians as a people, irrespective of whether you like us or not, you must like yourself first. You must like yourself. So in making that choice on Saturday, choose the party who you think will look after you better. So go back in history. So when Lagos wanted to do an IPP under Governor Tinubu, who opposed it? It was the other party. Think back, when Lagos wanted to bring governance closer to the people, who opposed it? It was the other party. I recall some of the things the other party used to do, because I, I, I always tell myself I will refrain from mentioning them, yeah. not just to promote them. They used to deliberately fill trucks with refuse mm. and scatter them mm. all over the city at night. Well, as well. a as a as an opposition strategy. So are those the people you want to entrust and your lives to? Minister, that, that bit you just said, I mean, you're saying that fact on, and on, proven on and documented. Okay, because um fact, proven and documented. Because uh, you, what you're saying Tundi that they, they, they sought to, to sabotage was, exactly, your efforts. Exactly. One of their favorite spots was a roundabout by the uh, USIS Center at TBS. I caught some of their people on not more than one occasion. I mean, that was the kind of opposition they played. And if you remember FEMA under their governance, and think of FEMA now under the APC governance, you will see the difference. So is that the choice you want to make? Okay. Certainly, as a citizen, I would make that choice. And then in terms of experience, come on, um, governance, governance is, not, uh, is, is, is not a glamour show. It's very, very brutal work, very, very demanding work. And these people have walked that road b with me before. And if you, if you talk about uh, many of the people who, who seek public office don't accord the right recognition to the public service. And I need to make that point very quickly. That is where all of the work is done. And I can say to Lagosians today that it was Jide who I asked to lead the management, the training, promotion, and the development of the public service during my tenure under the Ministry of Establishment, Training, and Pension. It was a ministry nobody wanted to go to. They used to call it the Siberia. And I said, don't worry, we will make this Siberia different. By the time he was done, not only did we then have people leaving the private sector to come into public sector. But we had states across Nigeria coming to understudy what we were doing with our manpower training and development. And so all of the good work that had been done there, and that's why I continue to say we have come a long way, but there's still a distance yeah. to run, and I trust this pair yeah. to run that race very well. Okay, Mr. Tawudu, um, let me get rid of some of those uh, human angle aspects of this whole thing before we come to the substance. Um, this whole question of whether it is freedom, whether it is bondage in Lagos State, whether we're, people are under bondage, would you like to comment on that issue? Because it's a point I've heard made uh, by the opposition that uh, if, if, if only they'd let them have a go, then they'd realize what they'd been missing because there would be freedom. First of all, your comment on that whole... Uh, well, I mean, thank you very much, Jerry. I mean, you know, um, it's something we've seen a few times on a campaign trail. And we've exposed it to Lagosians. Freedom from what? Like Femi rightly said, from an economy that is now today being canvassed as the fifth largest economy in Africa. When our government took over in 1999, right, Lagos was barely pay, could barely pay salary. It was actually borrowing money to pay salary at that time, collecting barely 600 million on revenue generation. It was all of the processes, the IT processes, the innovation, the reforms that we, the subsequent government, we brought in has led to, we have seen growth of over 30 billion on generations now in, in, in the state. But beyond that generation is also to see all the other developments that has happened. Somebody that talks about freedom every four, four years mm. at the time we see them, but they don't mention freedom when like Honorable Minister said, when the workers of the local government were shut down because we wanted to bring governance, governance closer to people, right? They shut down money for over almost two years. 
there was no freedom there. They didn't talk about freedom or freeing Lagos or Lagos in bondage when federal government at that time and their party, right, like they said, refused to allow us even to deploy IPP that everybody's talking about power today, way back in 2002, in which after 270, we'll have brought another 540. And they were killing the economy. And they didn't see the excellence there. There was no mention about freedom then. They didn't see freedom when people were seeing all of the issues around security and when we brought about innovation to help to support the, the, the men of the Nigerian police force, which are a responsibility of the federal government. But city, we brought a security trust fund that has enhanced, that has improved the quality of life of people. There was no mention about freedom then. There was no mention about freedom when federal government will stop even approvals that are domesticated. We wanted to get approvals on jetties, we wanted to get approvals on, and they will hold on and they'll be doing things. We had to take them to court. And we won at the Supreme Court. Over 14 cases, there were no mention about freedom there. And these are some of the challenges that we've had to surmount at every point in time to ensure that Lagos continue to remain focused, continue to see development, rightful development, and we continue to see the growth that we're all talking about today, right? To make sure, to say that you're the fifth largest or you've seen the growth population is because things are happening here. And it's because they've seen qualitative and quantitative development, which is brought about by rightful leadership, right? They've brought about by governance that has touched the life of people. So all these are just little talks that holds no value at all, that, that people just, you know, want to, um, for the sake of on, on the campaign, okay. say words that do not mean anything. Mm. And we've asked the Goshians, you know, where are the shackles? When we've brought about, you know, development, when we've brought about opportunity for everybody. Now what you seem to be saying is, uh, you seem to be saying really that's little more than a red herring. Uh, and interestingly, both of you, I mean, not both, all of you gentlemen uh, go back to Ashwa Jibola Ahmed Tinubu's time. I think that was the 12th. Um, governor of Lagos State. And I think um, allusion has been made to the style of governance. I, is that relevant to this conversation that we have about freedom? Because um, uh, maybe you might want to make one or two comments on that whole area about how decisions are taken, how directions are taken. Uh, are you giving the impression that it's thoroughly flogged out? Without, without any doubt, when we started since 1999, and which I mean, uh, the Home Minister was the first that joined the cabinet in 2002 then. I joined shortly afterwards and Femi came in around 2003, all in that government, right? Which the same government that has thrown out governors and vice president and all of various good things now. How we take out issues of concern of Lagos, is, it's always on the table. You must marshal your idea, your opinion, your thoughts. It's only when it's been thoroughly exhausted I will put it, you know, on superior platform and say, and once all of us agree, even if you have dissenting vote, everybody donates their time and their intellect and their pros to ensure that it works and it works well. The same thing will continue in the government of His Excellency Mr. Babatu Raj Fashila, even in tougher steps, to ensure that people, the Goshans take us seriously. We're serious about how we do things. We're serious about how we, we, we manage our time and how we ensure that everybody that comes to us lives with a positive experience. You know, and what all of the things we're about is that continuously, the greatest good is for the greatest number. Where do we get the maximum impact mm. for the development of our people? And even after we've done impact, let's even reevaluate and say the, as do a, an impact assessment to be able to see where are the shortfalls, what are the things we need to do. That's how the, 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 the foundation has been laid. And that's how we've developed it. And that's why you've seen the skills and the competencies that have been thrown out over this period. Of course, politically, we have, we have changed numbers, we have changed names. And it's because we're refreshing. We're rebuilding ourselves. <coughs> we're dropping things, we're mm. handing people on. And that is innovation. That goes to show mm. that we're moving, we're, 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 we're reforming ourselves, and we're, we're not a static mm. you know, um, mm. set of people that mm. are not bringing out new ideas and throwing out ones that didn't, doesn't feeding into 21st century. Okay, uh, uh, Dr. Hamza, would you like to say a word or two on this? Because um, uh, when, if the electorate decides, and indeed you do get to reside in government, government house, 
um, you will be responsible for spearheading policy and that kind of a thing. Uh, so continuing on this whole matter of freedom or bondage that your opponents are putting out there, um, and we have, you know, uh, former governor, now Minister Fashola here, that we can also double check on that. Uh, are you also confident or are you happy that it's a complete red herring and um, you expect, going by experience, if indeed you do have it, that you're going to run things the way your administration will be running it, Dr. Hamza. Thank you again. Look, I think like, you know, Mr. Sawolu just said. Um, ah, you, got, you just went to the Mr. Sawolu. Sam <laughs> <laughs> you switched to Mr. Yeah. And I've just been told that you guys are usually on the first name base, but uh, oh, well, that, I mean, that was just a joke. Uh, no, but seriously, um, when we wanted to do the red line, Mm -hmm. You know, around the world, around the world, most sub sovereign don't do rail like this. So Lagos State is the only sub sovereign that's funding such rail on its balance sheet. The city of London doesn't fund solely fund the, 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 the tube. The same thing in New York City. National government contributes. So we are the only state. But remember, we wanted to do the red line. It's because the PDP government there did not allow us for six years. These people did not talk about freedom. So that rail, is it a party rail? No, it's not. And then people now talk about Ethiopia and the rest. But in Ethiopia, the Addis Ababa line was funded by national government. So the government then was audacious to say, let's go and do it. I remember the governor of Ashola was saying that, look, none of us will see a rail mm. being built in our lifetime. None of us. When we were building the Lekki Link Bridge, we brought in students. We delayed that project to bring in. I was an engineer. So I, I did the engineering. I never saw in practical times a concrete mix. Never. Well, I read it. This is the ratio. This is the, But seeing it is believing. But on Lekki Link Bridge, we turn 300 millimeter steel and bend it. It only happens six times in 18 years. And it happened there in Lekki. It's a subject of PhD thesis. We brought in students from Nigerian University. They won't see that again. I never saw that as an engineering student. So when these people, it's just absolute ignorance. It's, 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 they don't really understand. We, we did things. Lagos State government, we, we went live on Oracle in 2008. The state of New York went live on Oracle in 2012. Nike, that manufactures all those sneakers, spent 17 million US dollars to implement Oracle and they canceled it. It wasn't successful because it's only 10% success rate around the world. Mm. But this state did it. Mm. Mm. So when these people talk, it's absolute ignorance. They don't even understand. Let me, let, let me bring that question. I'll stay on it. Maybe, maybe this is the last I'm going to talk about that. I mean, and I'm going to come to uh, Governor Vachula because he's been there. He's done that. This whole matter of freedom, um, let me ask pointedly, um, there's the concept of Babasa Ipe, and uh, in other words, you have to go wherever has been decided. Tell me about that, uh, because that's what's out there, especially from the opponents. You know, I think it's a question that really doesn't deserve the time that we are devoting to it. It really, in my respectful view, does not address the concerns that the majority of Lagosians are uh, are interested in what are the developmental issues, what are the security issues, what do we expect to see in terms of education, healthcare, employment uh, for, for young people. And I think that the choice on Saturday really becomes very stark. It is for Lagosians to remember the many battles that they have had to deal with and who were the people who fought on their side. It is these people. It is this team. And who were the people who were the aggressors? From FEMA to local government seizures to in the last elections, they locked down Lagos with armed men on Ikurudu Road. There's still a petition which I filed as governor for human rights violation. Who were the people behind that? It was the other party. And the, all of this is documented. So the choice really on Saturday 
is between your protectors, this team, and your aggressors. I will choose my protectors going forward. And that's as much as you want to say on that? On that, yeah. yeah okay. Uh, look, so therefore, let me come back to uh, you, sir, Mr. Babajide Olushola Songwolu. Um, I, I want to come into your theme, your theme, uh, development agenda for a greater <coughs> Lagos. It's keyed on five pillars, yeah. and we're going to address it. But I want to take you back to the campaign trail again and some things that we've, some news reports that we've noticed. I'm talking about the ethnic question, the ethnic question in Lagos State. First of all, how important is it? How much of an issue is it? You know, it's always very interesting when we dwell too much on ethnicity as against what we're all about. And a simple analogy is this, Yuri. When you go to the market to <coughs> buy meat or to buy tomato, is your first question, is this meat produced by an Igbo man, by a Yoruba man, or an Aosa man? Who made this tomato? Is it from Ibira land or is it from Ikorepene or from Adwekit? <coughs> Whose person has this tuba of yam come out from? Those are not the kind of questions we ask. When you go to the hospital, do you say to them, I want to see a doctor that is from um, Ikorabas? Or you want to say a doctor that is from um, Benin before you get served? No. So you see, it's only when people of little minds, it's only when people that are of no consequence begin to use ethnicity to want to divide a country or a state that we've so built on integrity or built on people or built on issues that we want to begin. So if those are not the things that are important to us, they shouldn't now begin to divide us. Because when you enter a taxi, you don't ask the ethnicity first. When you go into a bus, you don't ask where you have come from. You just believe that this person is going to render a service, you are going to pay for that service, and you're happy. So why would we allow a one-day event, uh -huh. or at best, a three, four months activity, uh -huh. now begin to set us back? That's not who we are. At least the three of us sitting down here, and our party. We are a progressive. We're a set of people that ensure that in respect of who you are, where you're from, what your belief are, what your region is, we will continue to make sure that we give the greatest good to the greatest number. It will always be a collective decision making, a, 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 a decision that will be inclusive, that will be transparent, that will be engaging. And that's what we are Because uh, Lagos State, uh, at least I can testify to that much. Lagos so, so, State so, has so this attitude us, of... So for us, it's not even something we want to begin briefing. to dwell on. Because what you yeah. said it reminds me of the briefing that's been a theme going back to Ashua Jibola Metinubu's time into Fashola's time, where periodically Lagos is... I mean, the, the media is called together and, you know, yeah. a, a report is made. Uh, sometimes, you know, it's, it's one of those where you can't necessarily record anything. But there's always been this continuous conversation going on between the government and the governed and the governed. You intend to keep that up? Absolutely. You know, and on the campaign, we've said so, that would run an inclusive government. We will listen and listen so very well. So we'll ensure that all of the stakeholders have regular engagement with us. Mm. Not only are we briefing them, but we're also taking feedback from them. We'll ensure that our communication system is two-way. We're, we're sending it out and we're getting, we're getting necessary feedbacks, <coughs> getting necessary so that we can continue to retool. In fact, we're saying we're going to be a bit audacious and try and see if we can put some branding around governance, you know, where it becomes a tool in which you can begin to donate time and effort. To, and Because government never knows how to communicate all if achievements very well and all of the things. So we, 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 we've said we're also going to step that up to continue to have an engagement with the citizens because okay. we're there because of them. Okay. Right? Uh, now, I haven't got those, if you want, tittle-tattle out of the way. I think we can now move into the substance, really. And uh, I'm probably, I'm interested in your five pillars, yeah. uh, the acronym being THEME, T-H-E-M-E. Mm -hmm. e. We'll just take a short break now. We'll come back and then we'll dive into that and see okay what theme means for Lagos and whether or not there's a continuity aspect to it or if this is a brand new agenda. So we'll just take a break. Stay with us, please. We'll be right back. We'll be including your calls in the third, no, it won't be a quarter, <laughs> in, in, in the last third of the program.
Welcome back to this special edition of uh, This Morning, which will be ending at 12 noon, and we have the distinguished panel before us, the APC candidate in the upcoming governorship election on March 9, 2019, Mr. Babajide Olushola Sawolu. He's accompanied by his running mate, Dr. Kadri Obafemi Hamset, and um, we also have the Minister for Power, Works and Housing, from November 2015, Mr. Bapatundi Rajifashola, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, and who, you know, coincidentally was the 13th governor of Lagos State. So he, you know, he knows a thing I'm, uh, too about um, exactly what we're talking about. Now, coming back to you, Mr. Sonwolu, the, we oft, we, we've heard that governance is a continuum. Uh, the late Sage Aulawa is credited with that expression, and it's been used by different peoples ever since. Um, your, pro, your, your developmental agenda for a greater Lagos rests on five pillars, and you've come up with the acronym THEME, T-H-E-M-E, -E, Traffic Management and Transportation, Health and Environment, Education and Technology, Making Lagos the 21st Century, and Entertainment and Tourism, to just so, sort of put it into three seconds. Um, is it a continuation or a continuum? I think the sage word was better. Is it a continuum or are, there, are you injecting, because again, they say innovation you know, uh, is essential in, in any progressive state. Mm -hmm. tell, me, tell me about that aspect. How much of this is a break from the past and how much of it is a, a, a continuum? Well, thank you very much um, once again, um, Yuri. I think if you listen, the first um, letter there, which is the T, stands for traffic management and transportation. And if I take two minutes just to talk sure. about, you know, um, it's a continuum, or it's just it's also an hard so. A fallout of our question, you know, our research, all of the places we've been to, right, is what has led to all of this. Traffic management, it's one of the very critical things the questions are asking us to go solve for them. We've identified over 60 different traffic redox in Lagos. And this is born out of the development we've seen in the city. You know, everybody wants a bridge, nobody wants it in front of his house, right? And we talk about all of this development that is happening all around our state. So each of these traffic gridlocks, we realize there are different um, specific requirements that are, re that are needed. Some of them are very unique, but some we've, we've seen are low-hanging, things that we can very quickly solve, you know, to ease all, the, all of the gridlocks. Some will probably need to reduce the size of the roundabout, they're actually very big, some will need to aggressively increase the number of traffic lights and road signatures and road furnitures rather that we have mm -hmm. all around mm -hmm. so that people can, you know, and some, you probably just need to increase some of the laybys you have. You are, you are going on a straight road, you need to make a right turn, so there's always a gridlock somewhere there. Once we've identified, have the proper setback for us to do proper um, routes that would keep you, you have two lanes here and you have enough setback for you to create another additional two lanes so that when you want to make a turn, you don't obstruct, you know, um, um, the, the real flow. These are some of the literally two solutions we've seen. And like I said, we've got it over 60 of them. Even on the campaign trail, we're doing study okay. to see how we solve some of those things very quickly. Mm. In the first six, you know, three months to six months, we will <coughs> solve some of them. Some are fairly long tenor which will, in, in, will require you know, extensive more studies. You know, we, maybe you need to do a bit more demolition or you need to really reconfigure mm. you know, um, the traffic that works. And I can give you a simple example. Even in the Lekki Toll Plaza, for example, that is massive, you've got 24 cubicles, you know, 12 on this side. 12. You realize in the morning it's usually one directional traffic, right? The other side is always empty. So the question we can ask, which is some of the things we're thinking through, can you make... The 12, can you make it 20? Can you make it 18 in the morning where you open a lot more boots for people that are heading out like this? And in the evening, you do the reverse of it, right? Open the 18 or the 20 boots on this other side and re retain only three or four for people that are easy flowing. And people that are coming back, you open it up. Or aggressively, and that's what we're doing in the study, right? Have the traffic payment or the toll payment only on one direction. Blow up the entire 24 cubicles to 18 or 20 fee paying, one directional, and the other two just... So we're looking at all of it. Yes. So, so, uh, this, this then is, um, 
I, is it a refinement of uh, infrastructural development and not a departure from what has gone in the past? No, absolutely no, not. It's not a departure. Okay. It's when you've used something, mm. it's time for you to also take stock of mm. it, mm. right? Okay. You've used something, you're taking feedback, you're seeing all of the processes, and you know, it's, it's a global world now, and you're seeing new processes in new areas, and say, innovatively, we can improve on this, and mm. that's what we're in government. Mm. That's what governance is all about. Okay. You continue to innovate. And on the flip side of traffic management is transportation, which is where you see the continuity clearly there. And we've said that from Ashwaju, from BRF, we will have a complete internodal, integrated mass transit system using rail, water, and the land. The water, the, the water has always been a promise. No, no, no I will explain. It has I will always explain, been a promise. I will explain to you. It's, is it going to come? It will come. Become more it is than a promise. It is coming, Yuri. And this is it. It's because people also don't understand how it works. Lagos, one third of Lagos is water. But it's not the kind of water you see in Thailand or you see in Brazil, sorry, you see in Paris or you see in Geneva that crisscrosses the city. These are big, massive body of water. And what you see is what we call single directional traffic. People that are leaving Ipakodo in the morning, they are coming to Victoria Land, they are coming to Marina, right, and it's full. But their return journey is empty, is empty. So when you have what we call one directional traffic, and they don't have stops on the way, once you take off from Marina, is a 30, 45 minute journey straight to Korudu. Same with Badori. When you leave from Badori and you're coming to VI, when they're going back, it's empty. The reverse of it happens in the evening. They take them from Marina, it's full, but it's reversed. So what that means, Yori, is that the cost is a bit higher. Because you see, you have a full load, and when you're going back, so their cost usually gets doubled. So part of the innovation we're bringing to it is to see if we can double the capacity. When you double or triple the capacity, mm -hmm. it defrays the cost. Okay. That's why investment is a bit slow there, right? And also, we also need to give them the easy part, the easiest part, and let's see if we can do some bit of um, identifying the shortest route for them on that big, massive water. So once, because even with BRF, we've built some of the terminals, we've built some of the jetties. We got a bit slowed down with federal government, but we, we thank God we're working with NIWA now, you know, to ensure that we can build a lot more jetties and the rest of it. Because someone mentioned that, um, I think it was BRF, that you got to ask, what, what does this mean to me? Exactly. How has this improved my e life? E exactly. And uh, one, thing, uh, one thing that is almost like it, it's known of Lagos is the gridlock. You come into Lagos, Yuri, you know that wherever Yuri. you were coming from, that you, a journey you could do in 30 minutes, Yuri. you think so in Lagos, you underestimate, you're no, going to be Yuri. very, very late. No, listen, you can, you certainly cannot eat an omelet without breaking air. This is where it happened. This is a growth population that you've seen, right? So, but of course, as government, is for us to solve it. Like we said, audaciously, six years ago, we started the rail, because we said that that is one of the ways you can solve, you know, mass movement of people. And we took the difficult one. What's the state of progress on it, by the oh, way? Oh, yeah, it's going nowhere. Believing and hoping that by the end of next year, mm -hmm. by the end of next year, I mean, all of the developments and the infrastructure should be off and we should have um, the rails up. In fact, we have the four, we have four test um, trains by, um, by um, National Arts Theatre, right? It's just that when we go back now, we need to clean up the, the, the corridor to Orile that has been done. We need to clean it up. You know, clean it up that place and see if we can start the test run. But of course, they need to now put the power there. So we're working on all of what well, we're believing that now that 18 months we should be up and running with it. Right. Okay. But that's that's all. So we'll see the rail coming up. You see the waterways that I've explained, right? And of course the BRT that we started years back to increase the capacity, open a lot more, you know, BRT corridor. What BRT does is also pulls, right? So if you do the three and have a payment solution where you can hop in and hop off, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. You'll see, you know, all of all of that coming together. And that's how you begin to solve your transportation problem called, um, um, completely. And you see, you can see the continuum. It's a continuum that we've started with Ashwaju, with, with, with BR, but we're bringing all of the grid locks together. And they're all fitting in together now to ensure that Lagosians, you know, get this whole full benefit. So the continuum is in place. Oh, well, it it's is. It is. Okay, um, uh, Dr. Hamza, when you... Why? I'm not, I'm not taking your five pillars in any particular order, but I want to jump to the E, which is education and technology. Tell me, why did you, why did those two go together? Well, I mean, it's, it's important for us. Let me just, we, Lagos State has 1,019 primary schools. We have 670-something junior and senior secondary schools. We have about 1.6 million 
kids in those schools. Now, think about it. That's like the, the population of students in the same category in Ghana. So that's what we are dealing with. So it's important. We must educate our kids, and then they, they, they have to compete globally. And that's why technology will be very key for us. You know, if you look back 20 years ago, the first 10 companies in the world are all the brick and mortar, GE, Mobile, and the rest. Today, they are all tech companies. It's Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet, which is the parent of Google, Facebook, and the rest. It's all tech. So the fourth industrial revolution is technology. And as such, we will be extremely big for everything we are doing. So our kids is the only way we think that our children can complete globally. It's technology. Therefore, we use education a lot more in our schools. We create what is called the kite, knowledge, innovation, technology, and entrepreneurship. Create those centers where tech, tech people can come and also work. The good thing for us in Lagos is we have over 500 tech startups now in Lagos. That's bigger than Johannesburg. Yeah. That's bigger than Nairobi. So we are, we, are, we are the biggest now in Nigeria, in Africa. So we can now upscale it and make sure that the outsourcing business that is out there in Ireland, in India, comes to Lagos. And then we'll be big with you know, broadband penetration in Lagos, the right of way, make it easier for them to put in the broadband and do the last mile. So basically, education is key. Of course, we must do all the infrastructure, things that are necessary for schools, you know, repairs, and then... So, Technology and education will be very, very big for us, Indeed. increasing the budget, making sure that we are able to educate our kids better and give them that level playing field around the world. Because the reality is, if you are educated, you can practice anywhere. Let me stay with you, especially because we are talking technology now. And um, I don't know, is Lagos thinking about the 5G that we're talking about and ask that question against the backdrop of Lagos being the center of excellence and also concerns internationally about whether or not 5, 5G is dangerous? Well, the, you know, those, those are things for the private sector in terms of those research and the yeah. rest in terms okay. of investment. Okay. But, you know, a car, is, a car can be dangerous. Yes. So somebody can, you know, if you don't know how to operate it, it can be dangerous. But it wasn't made to be a dangerous thing. If you have the skills, you, if you're a good driver, yeah, if you don't drink and drive and all those things. So 5G <laughs> is here to stay. Because it allows you to do artificial intelligence, intelligence a bit more. Yeah, and that's yeah, something... Are we right? Is, is Lagos... Wait, Nigeria first. Mm. Lagos being the center of excellence. Mm. Um, do you, and you would know a lot about it, do you think Lagos is right? Absolutely. Listen, you're, if you are a twin and you have almost 99.9% .9 DNA, mm -hmm. you'll not be able to do the same thing repeatedly every time. With technology, you're able to do it. So it allows your operation to be seamless. It allows your operation to be constant so that people can expect your customers, the citizens can expect <coughs> services at the same frequency. So it allows us to actually be able to serve our citizens better. So people go to the hospital and this is what they expect. So AI is it's, it's the in thing, it's the next generation. And therefore, it, it, we yeah. must, look, let me tell you, we went to Makoko mm -hmm. and we saw children, 10 year old, 11 old. year old, 12 year old. They are coding. They are coding. Oh, because I was, that was the way I was they going to go. Yeah. Whether you see it on the ground. No, no it's yes. already you there. See it on the ground. And, and these kids are in <laughs> public schools. There. These you are know, children. Yeah, they are in so-called government schools. Yes. You know. All of them. Their parents, have never, they don't even have an Android phone. They don't even have, they, they, the kids said to us, they don't even know what an Android phone looks like. They're, they're, it's unbelievable. You know, it's unbelievable. Yeah, and, yes. Yes. And so, so we're encouraged, <laughs> these are the kind of skills we need to upscale. Okay. And that's why we also, as a government, we need to also think out of the box and look at our curriculum. You know, it's in tune with, with the, the relevant things uh, thank, of the thank world. Thank you, sir. No, because I've been, let me just uh, confess that, I've been concerned about that, that all of these nice highfalutin things that we're hearing, actually, it, it depends on catching them early. Uh, as is said of uh, soccer, and BRF is you know, a soccer fan, although he hasn't played in recent times, but it's, we, we know we that... Um, How do you do that? But well, we know that you've got to catch them young. Yeah. Um, maybe in developed economies, even at the primary school. No, the state of Oshun tried something. Are, are, we, are we standing in good we, stead? We actually, one of the things we've even said, even on our health, is that part of the discussion we're having is early education, 0 to 10. We've had meetings with doctors at highest level in private sector, in government sector, and that's how we've realized we need to also up our budgetary allocation 
and defer a lot more money investment into early education and be able to activate their, their intellectual um, um, okay. capability yeah, okay. so that they, they are they're equipped to be able to pick up all of this, all of this engagement on the health side and on the, on the education side. Because I tell you... But with that technology aspect, uh, bringing, you know, in, uh, exposing our kids in, in school early, um, first of all, you're not going to be able to do that in an open-air school. So it means that certain enabling environments oh, are going to have to be in place at a sufficient number uh, for our kids to be meaningfully educated. In that no, regard. clearly we've said so that there will be some um, um, infrastructural upgrade that needs to happen. But the, the, the major thing is for us to work with the telcos and, and the um, broadband providers. Okay. Right? As they do all of their trucking of their um, um, fiber, they just drop at our various schools and our hospitals and security. You know, because all the three must work together with, um, with, with um, fiber optics. Indeed. Drop in school for us, drop in our hospitals, drop in any security formation, because that's what technology will be doing for, for us. We, know, we need it in those three sectors you know, like yesterday. Uh, Minister Fashola, let me come to you here. Um, w when, when you were in office as governor, you've enumerated some of the challenges that you had to surmount vis-a-vis uh, -vis cooperation from the center, from the federal. Um, now we, that was when APC, your party, was not in power at the center. Now that it is, and um, it's going to continue so from election results, uh, do you think this will accelerate? You know, I haven't had experience here and now there. Uh, how do you, th is that going to help Lagos increase the already fast pace? Without a doubt. And, um, I, and I, again, I reiterate very clearly to those who are going to vote, this is what you will be voting for. Um, listening to GD and his very, very clear and lucid narrative of what the transportation challenges are makes me very comfortable that at least there's a clear understanding and that understanding didn't come on the campaign trail it mm -hmm. was a shared understanding mm -hmm. from many years of grappling with the problem at different levels and also listening to Femi uh, very uh, granular understanding of the number of schools these are data that we collected together and so when you hear on the other side, I'm going to commit 50% to education. To do what? Knowledge. They don't know. <laughs> and this, the, 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 the difference is be like day and night as we go to vote and as we go to choose. Because what Femi perhaps did they add is that the number of schools that government owns is barely 10%. 10%. Mm -hmm of the total number of schools owned by the private, private sector. sector. Yeah. So where is your budget going? Exactly. Because the last budget or the current budget is about a trillion. So if you are com committing 500 billion naira to it, where is it going? Where is the understanding? Is money the problem or is it many other things? And this is the difference. So clearly, clearly, um, I, I repeat uh, that this is a choice between experience knowledge, and uh, for want of a better word, just a desperation to be governor. In terms of relationship, fortuitously, very fortuitously, Femi served with me in the last three years uh, that I have been Minister for Power, Works, and Housing. He was my special advisor on works. So he knows all the three ministries uh, reasonably well, uh -huh. uh, uh, if he doesn't know them all by, by the back of his hand. And that will be opportunity, whether I'm there or not, uh -huh. to leverage as a deputy governor. If Lagos State needs anything in any of those three mm -hmm. ministries, whether it's their power, whether it's their housing project, whether it's their Works. road projects, the roads that are going on now, uh, many of them he was involved in, the Kurudu, uh, Shagamu Road, yeah. the oh. Lagos Badagri, Road that we just awarded now from Okoko to to uh, Seme, uh, Seme. Uh, the uh, Apapa to Shoki Road. He was involved in all of them. Lagos Ibadan Expressway. He was the one who provided all of the technical support about many of the decisions that I had to make, which are not engineering, uh, which were engineering decisions. So that's a lot of experience to leverage and keep, yeah. rather than rather than uh, 
than, 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 than dispense with. And it will serve Lagos in many states. And when you look back, uh, I, I remember how many letters I wrote as chief of staff yeah. under Governor Tinumbu asking, asking for yeah. this, asking yeah. for that. That was never done. I remember how many letters I wrote as governor myself asking for the official residence. But it took an APC president, Buhari, to say, what's the big deal about yeah. this? You guys can have it. Sorry, so, sorry, yeah, so these things are... took an APC for them to give us a red line. The same red corridor we were asking for, for over eight years, which was the easier one, rather than go deal with the blue line, mm. Mm. which is the existing from Ebutemeta to Agege, which turns back to the, to the, to the seaport. So, we just wanted to increase, do the double gauge, move on and push it. It's only when they got there that, that Lagos begin to, you know, some people will have done, I mean, 10 years ago, 8 years ago. Okay. Uh, well, let me stay with you and continue, please, if you will, on, I'm, I'm crisscrossing your theme. I'm yeah. not necessarily taking it no in problem. sequential order. No Making Lagos a 21st century yeah. economy. Yes. That's important. It, it is, actually. And it's because of our belief in working with the private sector. Mm -hmm. We know the private sector are the engines of growth. We know the private sector controls close to 80% of the GDP that we're currently on. What is the population of a civil service? 150, 160 million, um, thousand. Even if we double that, 300,000, to the teaming population that are doing a lot of good things in the private sector. So the question is, what are the things we need to do to create that enable environment for them to continue to thrive well? Power, security, housing infrastructure development. Those are the things you have there that truly really will make your Lagos, my Lagos, mm -hmm. right, to making it, you know, a 21st century economy. Um, I'm sitting now with all humility with the Honorable Minister of Power, you know. Outside of him, we've met Femi and I with the two discos that are in Lagos, right? We have some bit of experience in, in privatization. We've met with them and we're having very difficult and tough conversations with them that see, in Lagos, Sort of taking Lagos out of a grid, mm -hmm. right? You need to just because of the level of businesses we have here and all of the things that we need to do. And mind you, when we started this conversation, we talked about how Lagos want, brought the first 270, which we wanted to upscale to 540. But it's not the conversation for today. But really, really, with the two discos, how can we work together and ensure that power is in your house, is in my house, and there are prepaid meters, not estimated bills. So those conversations are going on with them. Indeed, yeah. We see what their issues are. Lagos has also signed another mm -hmm. bill, you know, another law around embedded power, you know, and all of it. So these are some of the interventions we can do as a government to help the private sector and be able to do well. Zero in, Security okay. is Zero. another level. Okay, I'm gonna, we, uh, I'm, because you touched on power, yes. and we're fortunate to have the Minister of Power yes. here, um, this, this whole business of, uh, on, on an ordinary level, Never mind um, the the uh, tough aspects of it that people don't understand. Ordinary Lagosians that want a prepaid meter, not all of them can get it. And I'm putting it as discreetly as I can. I don't want to go overboard and say the majority don't have. Now this is a problem. Um, is there no? Is there a way in which, bearing in mind that the the the, the whole parameters are different, is there a way in which having APC at the center, and you coming into office, and this whole thing that you've just told being part of it, that that whole process can be sped up as indeed it must be all over the country, so that we stop paying, ordinary citizens stop p paying for what we're not using. Well, thank you. You know, so if you step it back, and we're not making excuses, but was the PDP government that went through the privatization, was it right? Was it properly done? It's another conversation. So it's been done, right? And so we're left with the, the, the current owners, you know, and mind you, they are, they are owners, mm. technically, so mm. they've been bought. So we have some regulatory and legal, you know, um, issues that okay. we cannot just, you know, bring the stick and say because we're government, we're going to do No, there are commercial undertone, right, that have been pushed on the table. So there are a lot of things that we cannot just yank off and say no. Uh -huh, we have okay. to understand and respect sanctity of contract and understand that you've gone into this thing, but this is the way we need to work. So... We understand that. So for now, Lagosians, those Lagosians that I'm speaking for will have to bear no, no, no. with that's the system why, a bit more. Yuri, that's why I said even on the campaign, too, we have had two meetings with them. Okay. Two meetings with them. Why we have not even won election, and we've seen the template. We've said to ourselves, these are the things we need to do. Lagosians, like I mentioned your name, 
we want prepaid meter. How do we go about it? We know they need to do additional investment to clean up their network. You know, because if you see in your house, maybe you've done connections in which you've got three faces, you know, and all of So they need to come, come to your house, right, and be able to do a system cleanup to ensure that when they give you the meter, you will not be overpaying or you will not be underpaying okay. because the system that will enter that meter is being clearly tested. So that investment they need to do, right? So maybe they are looking for the money, maybe they are looking, but we're talking to them. You need to make that investment for prepaid meter to be able to come in. Okay. In terms of generation, the minister has done a great a work on it, but generation can also be upscale. We always can bring, but the issue is not even more of the, is more of on the other side of it, you know, the distribution and exactly. how much are you bringing in? You don't want to put it on the grid, you want it embedded. What are the tariffs? What are the conditions that must be, you know, and so, and they have legal issues, you know, so we're trying to manage all of that. Minister, you know? <laughs> you, would you like to leave it like that or do you want to add one or few? Well, I think the only thing to add really is that there is a solution for meters and it is called the meter asset provider policy. And uh, essentially what it does is to allow private entrepreneurs to be licensed just like a Jenko or a Disco mm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. But your license will be meter, meter supply, meter installation, meter maintenance, working with the Discos. We already have 108 such companies going through a process. Okay. Policy has been settled. The difference between policy and benefit now is the time lag that it takes for policy to have impact so meters will be solved okay um okay we're going to take another break and uh, when we come back we'll um i'll continue with uh, dr hamzat but i suppose very importantly for a lot of our viewers watching out there we'll be opening the lines as well and so you can phone in your questions stay with us please we'll be right back Welcome back to this special edition of This Morning on TVC and uh, special panel. Uh, the last chance they actually will have to do anything electioneering by law is um, today. Uh, I think by tomorrow, nobody can do any more of that. And with the panel is um, Mr. Babajide Olushala Sonwolu, APC's candidate for the Saturday election. Uh, his running mate, Dr. Kaltri Obafemi Hamzat, and uh, the endorser, uh, Minister Babatunde Raji Fashola, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. Is that a new title? No. <laughs> 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 or, or you prefer former governor? The citizen. <laughs> eh? <laughs> oh, city, that one oh, is yes. already taken. Jones yes. has taken that one. <laughs> citizen Jones. <laughs> but let, 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 let me come to you, um, if, if I could, uh, Dr. Hamzat. This, looking at your theme agenda, um, health and environment, and because I'm... I'm I'm quite interested that when you're talking technology, you also input, it, you know, put it in there, and you know, because that's where it's going nowadays. In in the most developed of times, as you don't need me to tell you, surgeons are even performing operations remotely. Um, yeah, that's is that the kind of thing we're looking to just health and then environment and possibly the impact of technology on those. Well, for health, I mean, you know, Lagos State has about three forty-four primary health care centers, which is closer to people. We have 27 general hospitals, yeah. and then we have one tertiary, which is Lassut. Mm. Any specialist now, centers? Specialist centers? Yeah, Lassut. that's Lassut. Okay. That's the okay. tertiary institution. Is that where the renal center is? Well, that's, Not, that's, uh, one. that's one in it's Bagada. In Bagada. Uh, mm. so we, we have some of those. Well, those are specialist units across that we built. We have the M MCC, the maternal child mm. centers across the state. Now, one of the things we are also looking at, which should be new, is you know the health insurance is very key. Lagos State has started it. We need to push it and make sure that people subscribe. What that allows us to do is that it brings in a lot of you know we have about three thousand private hospitals yeah. in the state. So what that means is if you have health insurance, maybe a thousand of those private hospitals can come in. So which means that when you are coming from uh, Meno to Ikeja, 
you've passed maybe about 20, 30 hospitals that are part of that. So you can actually also use those private hospitals. What it does is that it allows us to increase the capacity of some of these private hospitals. And then we are able to, so government will work with them to mm. make sure that we increase the number of hospitals that is accessible to, to people. But people, we must engage our citizens so that we can do the health insurance. And then, of course, for our own hospitals, there are certain investments that we'll be making, which means that ultimately the budget needs to improve, mm. and therefore we'll be able to serve our, our people better. So it's, for health, it's, it's very key. In you talk about the environment, it's about sorting our waste, from our kitchen, you mm -hmm. know, usually that's what happens around the world. So you have the black nylon, you have the blue or the red, whatever color, mm. but you separate them into glasses, bottles, and organic waste. So what that means is that... Are we doing that yet? Well, not... We're, we're moving into it fully. Exactly. So, but okay. what we want to do is let's start from the homes yeah. okay. so that when people pick it up, they know I'm picking organic garbage or this is my bottle. So what that means is if I'm processing bottle and I put it into my machine, it doesn't break up because I have other components that is not necessary. So it reduces the cost of my investment. So, you know, if I'm using it, if I'm using rubber, for example, for, shoe, for, for, shoe, for shoes, what it means is that I'm converting it, but I have other competitors. If I'm spending money sorting, what it means is I'm already spending about 10, 20 percent more money than my competitor. So my business is not competitive. So sorting has to be done. And then Loma, okay. which uh, is the... Uh, I beg your pardon for interrupting you, but okay. uh, Omoba has called in from Maryland and okay. um, he's been on the line a while. Uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Omoba. Omoba, good morning. Are you there? Omoba in Maryland. Um, Good morning, sir. Ah, uh, thank you very much for calling in. Go ahead, please. Yes, yeah, please. I I just want to speak to. Yes, sir. Good morning. Please go ahead with your question. Okay, sir. I just want to speak about some things and then to ask some questions. Well, very briefly, please. Very very briefly. Okay. Uh, like thirty I, I seconds. Want to to, okay, I want to speak to our ex governor uh, Fashola that he should please do more in power supply. <laughs> because the, the, what we are facing in power, we don't, we don't appreciate it. You know, Mr. Moba, I dig you, but the emphasis right now is the governorship election coming yes, up Yes, I'll speak Saturday. about that. I'll speak Please about go that. there. Thank you. Yes, of course, of course. And then our, our candidates, I want to ask him a question also. Go ahead, please. Yes, okay. Are you starting of victory this Saturday? Because the way it seems, I'm sorry, sir, you are not speaking confidently. And then if Paravin will become the governor, what are the things are you going to do for negotiations? Again, it's so amazing that Governor Ambody is not seated. Why is he supposed to be our uh, minister? Okay. No, I agree. Uh, okay, I, thank I'm, you very I, much for calling in. I appreciate your call. I was wondering, but, um, I mean, I, Mr. Swamuolu, even if I say so myself, has been most lucid and sure of himself. And so when you started off there, you know, uh, I, I sort of understand now where you're going. Um, I don't know. We don't censor calls, but please keep it on the lane that we sort of started with. Ask any question you want, but, you know, you know how we do. And, um, sir, Mr. Moba, I, you haven't called in before, so maybe you don't know how we do. But we try and keep it on the level. Um, I interrupted you because I had to go there. You know, you know. So um, you were explaining this whole matter about te how health and in the environment uh, would, move, uh, would um, sort of mix. And you were explaining about this Western concept for now of sorting garbage. You know, because well, Lego is the center of excellence anyhow. Absolutely. So uh, that's where we're going to be. Yeah, so we uh, will be aggressive in that. Okay. We, we and the whole matter of garbage collection, yeah. which became something of a difficult issue, uh, no, I mean, is that is that sorted out no, now? No, if you recall, I mean, Loma, which is the agency That's responsible, right. cleaned Lagos. Okay, so Loma must then be the apex agency. Any other any other businesses or okay. private enterprise are welcome, okay. but they must operate under Loma. 
because LOMA is the apex agency. There are PSPs and any other private companies that want to work, of course, must work. I think that was the mistake that was made. But, of course, you know, that's the essence of governance. Mm. You really reevaluate. Um, so Lagos will be clean. But again, like we said, as, we as much, do a sort Has any traction, no, let me not say much, has any traction been lost as a result of um, some sort of a, uh, an interruption to the... Well, I mean, the, 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 the result is, is that there's re-evaluation, and you can see now that the PSPs are, are coming back. We've been talking to them. They are coming back now. There are sweepers on the street are coming again. So, and that's what we again re-emphasize, to make sure and just that... just also mentioned, you know, uh, part of the things is... Also to look at investments that are targeted at them. How do we quickly empower them? You know, if at the moment they look at their cash flow, and we can also, I mean, help them with the financial institutions to ensure that they can access some new equipment, which would encourage, you know, further investments okay. in this area. And they'll become, you know, empowered to do mm. all of the various things they need to do. Okay. Right? On, on the bedrock of that platform too, like I've said, you know, on health and environment, is also look at, you know, drainages, you know, um, okay. Lagos. But again, I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. This is the time dedicated okay. to okay. The, all those Where's guys the, out there. Okay. Uh, the Olajide in Ikotun. Good morning. Thank you for calling in, Olajide. Yeah, good morning. Thank you. Please go ahead. Yeah, please. I would like to direct my question to the incoming uh, governor of Lagos State. <laughs> we got to hold the election first. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead, please. All right. Uh, my question is, uh, what do we expect from him based on the start of the coming election? And as a negotiator, what are the agenda he has for us, ah. especially on Apapa uh, congestion? Mm -hmm. Haven't we been together from the beginning of the program? Nevertheless, I'm sure Mr. Sawolu will be able to accommodate. Apapa so, Apapa congestion. Yes, and the Apapa yeah. congestion, that's uh, something you introduced. Yeah, I mean, thank you very much, um, Olajide. Uh, well, the minister is also here. There's been lots of um, activity that we've started around APAPA, right? And we have mentioned, right, on the campaign trail that it's something that will try and put a permanent solution to. But this is the issue. Because the people of APAPA, no, especially residents, no, yeah, but, sorry but, for themselves. But I was, we're still there three days ago, actually. And in core APAPA, core APAPA is getting better, right? And so what you've seen is that is a tailback that we're still seeing on the bridges, and which is one of the things we're going to clear very soon. We've had conversations with all of the stakeholders, and we'll be there myself, ourselves. Part of the things that had happened was, first, there was a privatization that happened around the ports. All the, all the container terminals and all of it have been privatized. So meaning they have private owners now who have pushed out these trucks that hitherto used to be parked in their premises, they pushed them all out. You know, that's some of the genesis of the problem, apart from the roads that are, you know, in a, I mean, they're not very good and the rest. Then that's number. Number two is I'm also aware that the, the Ministry of Works, Power Infrastructure, they are doing some um, renovation or some um, um, car um, park um, renovation for them, oh. some, which I'm sure new construction, will, new construction yeah. exactly, new which I'm sure yeah. will be will be completed anytime soon, right? And there are existing you know um, parks that these people just need to go back to. Is enforcement that we also need to scale up? Is enforcement? I we're, we're, we're spoken to law enforcement agency, you know, that are going to also help us. is enforcement and to be able to sustain those enforcement, right? And I can assure you that in the next couple of days to weeks, those numbers will, will because we've started working okay. with them, will begin to go off. Inside our papa itself, they begin to resolve it. You actually can go in there. They begin to, for Morile, to, they begin to resolve it. So the ones on the bridge is to push them out. Is you, to push them out. Yeah, and you started off by saying it's just as well that the minister, yes. uh, you know, he, he is here. Um, uh, well, I think when, when the president came to Lagos, magically, all those trailers along the Lagos uh, <laughs> expressway, they, 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 they disappeared. And we thought, oh, God, thank God. Thank God that the you know, president came and so this has happened. But, minister, they all came back. Look, sir, uh, I think that there's need to understand what the uh, root causes of the gridlock are. And uh, Jide has referred to some of them here. First, we've outgrown our port. And therefore, a port that was supposed to uh, process uh, 30 million metric tons of goods a year is processing 84. Now, those trucks don't want to wait there either. Okay. So it's not as if they are straying 
itinerantly and just looking for it. They want to enter a port. So that's what they're queuing up for. That's, that's and it, it spills over so, onto our... And what do they want to do? They want to either take in raw materials to factories where Nigerians are employed. So in order to ease that gridlock over that weekend, certainly some business, some businesses had to uh, wait a little. Otherwise, it would have been essential uh, shutdown of Lagos. That's one. So it's easy to say, oh, let's just take them off. Factories will close down. If I that know happens. that for free. Okay. Because they depend on the raw materials they're bringing from the port. And the point must be made. He has alluded to it. Who concession the port? Our major opponents. And what post evaluation performance did they put in? Yeah. So we are cleaning up their mess again. Okay. Uh, let me go back to Mr. Let me go back. Let me go back. I want to go back to Mr. Samuelu uh, because uh, we have. I, I don't know how time is flying, but another aspect is entertainment and tourism. Yeah. I don't want where we're talking all this, you know, technical stuff yeah, and very very important ones. stuff. It's 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 a it's it's a big thing these it's actually, days. It's actually entertainment, tourism, and sports. Okay. And sports. Mm -hmm. It's actually entertainment, you know, tourism and sport. Okay, and before you launch, let yes. me take Sheung from Ikotun. Okay. Uh, good morning, sir. Sheung from Ikotun. Hello, good morning, sir. Thank you for calling in, please. Uh, please go ahead. Yeah, um, my question is directed to the governor ship candidate from APC Sonwolu. I have an issue with um, the local government. So, like now, the, my local government chairman, before elected, was living in Ikotu. But after I elected, she moved to another local government. Another local government. Now, the roads there, they are not okay. She comes in briefly. So what I want to know is, what are you going to do about that? Hmm. Because our road from that place to our place of work is bad. I can tell you that, like on Monday, it took me like three hours to leave Ikotu to Jakonde. Three hours. Okay, Sheon, thank you very much. We'll let you know, Mr. Sanwolu address that well, question. Thank you very much. Just to first say, if you are leaving from that Ikotu runabout to Jakonde, it's unfortunate, but what has happened is development. Not that the road is bad. You pass in front of um, again another case about growing. It's, it, that's what has growing. happened, right? It's it's development that has that has because it's a huge population, it's a huge huge, and the market has sprung up onto the onto the road because the place I know very very well from that Ikotun and about from Abarajo, all the roads there have been done right to Sheryl Oshun at the back, but it is the the number and the teeming level of population that you have around there. Right, that has happened. It's, it's a dual carriageway. It used to be a single road. It was a BIF that was made a dual carriageway. So we need to open up new ones. There's one that bust from the back, from Ikotun, that bust right by Jakonde um, Estate. Mm. That is, I don't know what that road, but it's an express road as well. It comes from the back of Ikotun and it bust. It's longer, but it, 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 it opens. It, it, it's a longer route, right, but it's always a freer road for them to pass. Okay. Right, so... It's, it is just, it's still the function of the number of people that we need to deal with, okay. right? And so part of the solution is to look for mass transportation, right? So where people can hop in and hop out so that we don't have, you know, one person driving a car or two people in a single car. If you can do the pooling system, right, and have bigger buses that can take a lot more people, then we can also ease, you know, those corridors, right? As regards his local government chairman um, living... Um, the, the place of residence. Okay. Well, I think that's unfortunate, right? I, I, I wouldn't know what, for whatever reason, mm -hmm. right? Um, but, but the critical point we need to ask is, you know, to ensure that, you know, whoever is the chairman, you know, do their job, right? And they do it efficiently and effectively within the time that has been given for them to... Yemi to in Lagos, good morning. Good morning. Go ahead with your question, please. Oh, thank you so very much. Uh, it's not really much of a question. I just needed to underscore what the former governor, uh, Mr. Vatudi Raju Fashola, said about Lagos not being um, in a position to experiment. I think I want to emphasize that. There has been 
a very enthralling and you know engaging period since 1999 till day when it comes to the governance of Lagos State. And I think it will be an unmitigated disaster if by any means uh, we break this chain of you know uh, oh. development. Oh. I have no doubt in my mind mm -hmm. from what I know of the um, candidate of the APC, Mr. Sonwolu, and his um, running mate, that they have gone through the mills and they have what it takes to deliver as you know chief executive and deputy in Lagos State, especially with you know the support of people like uh, uh, former Governor Fashola and the um, entire Lagos population. All right. I just want to add that there needs to be a revisit of the uh, manpower training and development of the civil service, of the public service as a whole in Lagos State, mm -hmm. which received, you know, some good attention between 2007 and 2010, if okay. I may recall. Okay. Uh, because, like the former governor said, that is the engine room for development in the public service. Thank, Thank you sir. very much. Really appreciate your call. I'm going to have to return because now we're, now we're down to the wire. You were going to speak about entertainment, tourism, and sports. And um, that... that well, that, that's an area that we, we certainly cannot overlook. Um, first to start is those two industries, entertainment and tourism, they're huge employers of labor. And, so, and there's also the, 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 the initiative around using them also to possibly push the image you know, of Lagos and Nigeria by extension. There's a huge youth population in that, in, that, in that space, in that economy, and government needs to help them. We need to bring about policies you know, and programs that can see them being partners with government. So we've spoken to a whole lot of them. We've had engagement with them to see what kind of development government can play. Okay. You know, the private sector wants to help in the entertainment industry. In the tourism industry, is policy. You know, it's to bring about policies where we can see Lagos as a destination. When people are plotting what their plans are in the year, let's see a one week or a two weeks tourism activity in Lagos, right, where people can come from all over the world okay. right, and see, you know, a one week activity that will show our culture, that will show our heritage, that will even show all of our blue, you know, ocean line. Lagos is one of the ones that has 187 kilometers of um, beach line. So let's turn it into a positive place where, we you know, we all can live and play well. And finally on sport, you know, it's to start also, which I'm sure if I'm gonna, they do very well, grassroots sport again. Okay. Encourage especially people that are uh, physically challenged. They do a lot of sporting activity. And sport, by extension, also activate the brain. Okay. It's one of indeed. the ways in which people get... Should you, know, you sh should you indeed be voted by the electorate, will you also be uh, a sporting governor? I mean, or maybe your game is in soccer. I'm, 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 I'm a sporting person. <laughs> I, I, I jog, I run, but I don't play. But I analyze football very well. Okay. I, I, I analyze. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, you must have analyzed United States. <laughs> 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 you analyze very well. How about you, Dr. Amzad? Well, same, same thing. thing. <laughs> same thing. <Yeah. laughs> okay. Uh, I think we have. Um, uh, well, actually, we, uh, uh, we, 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 uh, we, 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 we don't have as much time as we'd like. And as we are counting down now, I just wanted to. Uh, I thought it might be a good idea to take a few seconds yeah. to actually have the last word. Uh, to the voters, uh, if, you, if, if you will. Well, thank you very much, Yuri. And I think um, I want to also thank my brothers that are here. But it's really the thank is to the Lagosians, is to the 5.8 million PVC card carrying members, Lagosians that are out there, right? We've said it, the choice is clear, right? Who knows the road, who has been there, who has the experience? But more importantly, is for us to see and to believe that what we're about is about changing the narrative, improving on all of the things we're currently doing so that we can bring about positive development to the vulnerable, to the less privileged, and to every citizen that is law-abiding in Lagos. Mm -hmm. Our government will be a government that will be inclusive. Our government will be a government that will listen to you. Our government will be a government that you have access to us. We'll create a two-way channel of engagement where you can always reach us, speak to us, hear us out, and let us know what feedbacks you have. So this is what we're asking of you. On Saturday, it is your civic responsibility as Lagosians, as Nigerians, to go out there to cast your vote. And while you're casting it, is to say that Femi and I are, are, are out there. 
We have brought about programs that will improve the quality of life, that will bring about security of life and property, that will ensure that we'll give the greatest good to the greatest number and bring about opportunity for the youth, for the vulnerable, for the women in our society. And that's what we're asking you to do, mm. that on Saturday, vote rightly, vote for APC, vote for the team for a greater Lagos, and it will be well for to all of us. Thank Dr. you so much. Dr. Hamzad? Well, I mean, the same thing. It's, uh, it's important to, when you, when you want to have a nanny, you, you don't entrust your children to somebody you don't know that doesn't have the experience. So this is Lagos. This is our life. So we cannot entrust our lives to people that don't understand the business. And as such, we are saying, please go and vote for APC so that we can keep moving our state and continue to progress and, you know, enhance the life of our children and our grandchildren. Mm. And, uh, Minister, you made the point which has been reiterated by one of our callers that experimentation is not what he expects uh, for the people of Lagos. Obviously, when you listen to the two candidates, whether it was a papa, whether it was a cotton, whether it was Meron, whether it was Badori, they were familiar with the territory. And that means they're familiar with Lagos and they're familiar with the people. So all I want to say in closing is that, um, especially to young voters, this is about your future. Turn out there and come out in very, very large numbers. The numbers we saw in the last elections uh, did no justice to our claim to be the most populous state in the country. Uh, they did no justice to, our, to the size of our economy. Politics is about the economy and about your lives. Go and make sure you use your votes to show that these things are important to you. Employment, economic opportunities, education, development, sports. Your PVC defines it. Choose experience on Saturday. Vote APC. Thank you very much, uh, Minister Babatunde Rajbe Fashola, uh, rounding that off. And my special thanks to uh, APC candidate in the upcoming governorship election, Mr. Babatunde uh, Babajide, I beg your pardon, Mr. Babajide Olushola Sonwolu. Thank you very much. And uh, your running mate, Dr. Kadri Obafemi Hamsat. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for coming on the program. Thank you for having us. Indeed. Thank you. Our pleasure. Okay, so that's our program, the special edition, as I said, and as you've seen. Um, join us tomorrow. Um, I'm afraid it's going to be the regular edition tomorrow, one hour only. Uh, see you tomorrow, God willing. Bye bye for now.